from Jeremy's burner account. The Titans trade for Marcus Peters from the Ravens. Mm. I could see Peters being moved. Uh, Ravens saved ten million or so by moving on from him, which is a pretty big chunk of change for a guy coming off an injury. But he's a good, good corner, right? Big time playmaker. It's Trayvon Diggs before Trayvon Diggs and Xavier Howard. Like he just makes plays in the football, and that's valuable. Tennessee, though, you have Janoris Jenkins. I'd say he gets cut. Christian Fulton, who I like, who I love actually. Elijah Molden, who I love. And he's been a first-round pick on Caleb Farley. Do you want to trade assets for a potential one-year rental at corner? Maybe, if it's cheap enough. Speaking of trades, I want you guys to name a player who you think gets traded this offseason. Let me know in the comments right now. Let's go to Boomer247. Titans need a wide receiver three, maybe even a slot. Would Jihad Dotson be a good pick? I like the Jihad Dotson pick a lot. In fact, I think that's who Mel ended up going with in his uh, mock draft at pick number 26. I mean, let's face it, you got Julio Jones, you got A.J. Brown right now. The Tennessee Titans really struggled when either of those two guys weren't in the lineup. If you have those two and then you throw Dotson in the slot because Chester Rogers is a free agent, that's a really, really dynamic duo. Though, I would be interested to see if they could bring in somebody like a Traylon Burks or a bigger receiver who can also block a little bit because that offense is still a run-first offense. One of the quarterbacks that's really hard to put your finger on, and yep, that's uh, really weird to say out loud, is Carson Wentz. And where do y'all think that Wentz is going to end up playing next season? There's been a lot of reports out there that the Colts are already looking to move on or looking to upgrade at the quarterback position. Wentz had 27 touchdowns, 7 picks last season, and just couldn't beat the Jacks to get into the playoffs. So where do you guys think Wentz is going to end up playing next year? Taylor Holland, two questions, okay. Best small school player that could go a little bit earlier than expected. And better comp, uh, Devin Lloyd to Darius Leonard or N'Kobe Dean to, Ro to Roquan Smith-like impact. Um, I like to do my player comps based on like size and measurables. I think they're all actually pretty decent. Um, I, I, think, I think that Lloyd will test better than Darius Leonard ended up testing this past year. Um, if looking for, uh, so I'll, I'll go Dean and Roquan in just in terms of, obviously if you get either of those guys, you're super hyped. Small school guy who's going to go earlier than expected. Um, does Chris, how early does Christian Watson go at a North Dakota State? The receiver. He could go maybe early day two. Other very small school guys I could see going early. Um... Mm, i trying to think of like maybe names we haven't mentioned before at all here on the channel. Um, does, does Tyler Algier count as a small score? Is BYU? Pr probably not. You know? Trevor Penning, we all know he's going to go earlier, so I can't count him from that perspective. But he's a small school, but we're talking earlier than expected. Now, if he goes top 10, I think that'd be earlier. I mentioned Tariq Warren out of UTSA in my mock draft. I think that's a decent name there. Um, oh, how about Troy Anderson? Linebacker from Montana State impressed very well at the combine or at the Senior Bowl, and I think will measure well at the combine as well. So another quarterback that's got a lot of drama around him, as always, is Baker Mayfield. And is he going to be with the Browns in 2022? Go ahead and type your Y for yes, or you can go ahead and type your N for no. If you want to get a question about Baker Mayfield on the show, the way to do it is use hashtag NFL. Will the Browns have Baker Mayfield? Kind of frame it like that. So Y for yes, N for no. Will Baker Mayfield be with the Browns? So St. Patrick's Day, this might be breaking news to some of y'all. It's March 17th every single year. Every single year, Harrison Graham. So if you guys want to go ahead and get some awesome St. Patrick's Day gear for your favorite NFL team, go to chatsports.com slash NFL Green. Every year, and I'm not kidding you when I say this, every year, my girlfriend looks at me and goes, what do you want to do for St. Patrick's Day? I'm like, I don't care. We can do whatever. She's like, what are you going to wear? I don't have anything green. I'm going to be honest with you. I never wear anything green. You know what I will wear, though? If it's Raiders-centric or if it's my favorite team or player, I'm going to rep that. And I can then go ahead and rep that on St. Patty's Day. So if you plan on going to a parade, if you plan on going to a party, if you plan on just getting schmacked, then you might as well do it in your favorite team's gear. So go to chatsports.com slash NFL Green. We got all sorts of stuff. Not just the stuff you saw up on screen. But here's the thing, y'all. It's going to go quick. And if you want to get it before St. Patty's Day, you got to go to chatsports.com slash NFL Green. What position is taking the most the first round of the draft? So which position 
gets taken the most in the first round of the NFL draft. I'll say offensive tackle because I could see five offensive tackles going in the first round. Quarterback's always going to be thrown out there. Wide receiver, we could see six wide receivers go. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go wide receiver. That that's going to be my answer. I could see six receivers going in the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft. For nonstop coverage of NFL free agency, draft trades, and more, hit that big red button and subscribe today. It is all free here on Chat Sports, and it always will be. So if you haven't already, subscribe right now. From Blood Wolf. Thoughts on Drake Jackson for USC. You're, you're banking on the upside. I, I got my notes done here. I got a second-ish round grade, at least before combine and stuff. Uh, he cut down his weight, dropped 25 pounds since his freshman year. The production's always been kind of middling as well. But he's got bend and burst. He's young. He only turns 21 in April. There are flashes of those elite traits, but... I don't trust him right now uh, uh, against the run, and he's got to add more power. So I think you gamble on that type of player in day two. I would. I hated how much USC dropped him into coverage. That was stupid by the Trojans, but I think there's upside there of a nice round two pick who emerges as a potential really solid edge two in the NFL. All right, y'all, it's your turn to take a guess here. Where will OBJ sign? This offseason, he's one of the top wide receivers in free agency. I have him ranked at number four. Unfortunately, though, for him, he did tear his ACL in the Super Bowl. I almost said national championship game. Where is my head at? So where will OBJ sign this offseason? Devin Greathouse, where do you think Watson will sign you mean be traded to? I don't know. I think Carolina will go all in on him this offseason. But they are a bit light on draft capital. The Eagles and Giants have the picks. Do they want him? There's a lot of concern on that front for Deshaun. He's still, as weird as it's been, in a holding pattern for the past year-ish at this point. ECK Sports, possible teams for Hassan Reddick. I think Seattle would be a great destination. Any team that needs a pass rusher, and there are a lot of them, should have interest in Hassan Reddick. The number one fit, though, as far as I'm concerned, he should just go back to Carolina. Like, they need him, and I think should want him, opposite Brian Burns. It'd be a fantastic one-two punch, just like it was this past year. I'd go that route. Maybe the, the Jets or Giants, they want some more pass rush help. Both those teams would be, I, I would argue, good fits. But any team that needs, needs a pass rusher, it's a good route to go explore. Final question here at the Super Chat, coming up from Taylor Holland. Best value free agent signing of the last five years that made the biggest impact and the most overplayed and bust of the last five years. Yikes. So the best value free agent signing of the last five years. Dude, I'd have to really sit down at most overpaid and bust of the last five years. Well, the name that comes to my mind right away from a Raiders standpoint is Trent Brown because they made him the highest paid tackle. They put him on the right side. Essentially paid him $76,000 per snap. So that's an absolute bust in terms of the most overpaid is can anybody think of a super overpaid or underpaid free agent that's the thing Zeke Zeke wasn't that uh let me come back to me message me on Instagram Taylor I'll try to give you a better answer but going back to the past five years is never an easy thing to do